Greetings and welcome as always to CS441 541 Artificial Intelligence. I'm Bart Massey. I hope all of you are doing okay out there in this uh, difficult time. We uh, want to talk a little bit today about heuristics and their role in AI. It's going to be one of those things that bears a lot of thought and there's a lot we can do with it and it will kind of carry throughout the course. So. I really want to sort of push through the idea of a heuristic and how this works. We'll do a little bit of stuff later, you know, over the next few weeks that's around applying heuristics in various situations. So that's the plan for this talk. So what's a heuristic? Uh, it's a simple idea from algorithms. And um, before we do that, let's review a little bit of algorithms. This is the point in the course where I point out that it's really important to know your algorithm stuff. And so we're gonna start with that. Uh, and the idea here is to think about problems and instances and classes, because this is at the heart of what computing is. And when we think about AI, it can be a really useful framework to think about what is it we're even actually trying to do. One of the problems with the AI historically has been that it's really hard to define, as we talked about last time, it's really hard to decide what even your goals are. And so we really want to be able to narrow it down. So what's an instance? It's some very specific description of a situation. This is how things are. And um, together with some description of what you want to figure out in that situation. So I'll give an example shortly, but the idea here is that an instance is, okay, right now in the real world, in this situation, I need to figure this thing out. And you know, all the numbers are in place, there's no generality. A problem you can think of as a collection of related instances, so that all have, are similar, right? And a class is a collection of related problems. So we have this sort of three-step hierarchy. And probably the easiest way to understand that is with an example. So let's think about an instance of sorting natural numbers. So I happen to have the three numbers 1, 3, 2 in that order. And I want to produce the, the, the three numbers arranged in increasing order. So I need to shuffle these around somehow so that they are in increasing order instead of this random order that they're in now. Well, it's not a very hard instance, right? You absolutely can swap two with three or however you wanna do it to get one, two, three, which is pretty clear these numbers arranged in increasing order. So that's an instance, very specific numbers, no generality of any kind. What's the natural number sorting problem? Well, given any sequence of natural numbers, whatever it is, the you want the, to arrange that sequence um, in order whatever sequence it was. So if I give you 15751131, then there's a unique output that you need to somehow produce. And an algorithm is a way to mechanically produce the sorted sequence from the unsorted sequence. And so I'll try to be really careful throughout the course with problem and instance, but it's a thing that you do have to be a little careful about. So we got instance, we got a problem, what's a class? Well. Classes are a collection of problems, and so the class of sorting problems includes all kinds of interesting stuff. You know, natural number sorting, floating point number sorting, string sorting, 2D sorting, 3D sorting, ND sorting. And, you know, all these things are related because they're very similar kinds of problems, but they're not all exactly the same. And so maybe it makes sense to lump them sort of together into a single class. So that's basic computational algorithm stuff there's nothing too special there and you know the next thing if you'll remember from your algorithms class that you need to think about is sort of the computational complexity of an algorithm that is what is how does the running time in the worst case typically change as the problem gets bigger so for sorting problems for example certainly for natural number sorting um, there's algorithms that have the property that in the worst case you give it the hardest thing you can 
it will solve in time proportional to n log n, where n is the length of the sequence. And so that's sort of a lower bound actually on sorting under certain assumptions. And so we like to think of things this way. We like to think about them in terms of as the problem gets bigger or the problem gets harder, how much do things slow down? Um, because for AI problems, typically, we don't expect to be able to solve ridiculously hard instances, but we do expect to be able to solve ridiculously easy instances. And it's sort of a measure of intelligence in some ways is how far can I push that border? How far can I get toward sort of solving harder and harder instances? Anyway, part of the point of this was, look, if that looks unfamiliar or confusing. If you're like, I've never really seen this big O stuff before. I don't really understand how we talk about the running time of algorithms. Yeah, this course is going to be very inaccessible to you. And I you know, would very seriously suggest that what you do is you go take a good algorithms class or retake a good algorithms class, something like RCS 350, which is normally fantastic, and then come back when you've got algorithms figured out, because an awful lot of what we're going to talk about over the next 10 weeks is algorithms, for sure. So what kind of problems do we tackle in AI? Okay, that's what out instances and problems and classes and stuff are. What class of problems does is sort of the AI problems? Well, it's problems that you know, may not be as well specified as our sorting problem was, right? The sort of one of the characteristics of problems we encounter in AI is that there's a lot of wiggle room in terms of how the problem is posed. But given that, we want an answer, and you know, in terms of what's desired, we want a smart answer, something that, you know, sort of solves the problem or does whatever. And we want it to be good enough, what we call satisficing. You know, that's, that can be really fuzzy. And typically, in AI, we're not interested in problems where efficient algorithms are known to exist for large hard instances, uh, larger hard instances. So for sorting, for example, that's not really an AI problem because you know I can build simple mechanical, not very smart systems, literally mechanical, or you know using a computer, very simple programs, which do a very efficient job of sorting sort of even very very long sequences and so not so much an ai problem you know something like solving rubik solving rubik's cube you know that's more of a challenge in that the four by four by four rubik's cube isn't just a little harder to solve than the three by three by three for example if we use that measure of scaling it's a lot harder and you know the sort of 16 by 16 by 16 rubik's cube eh, not sure how you'd make progress on that uh, and the last thing is that, you know, sort of we don't think of it as an AI problem if it's just too hard, if even, you know, if instances are just too hard for people to solve too, you know, the, and there's a fine line there somewhere about, well, which people, there's all kinds of interesting people who can do all kinds of inconceivable things. But in general, right, we're interested in the class of problems that, for which it feels like intelligence could help. It feels like I could do a better job with more intelligence. We joke sometimes, you know, just like there's the class of NP complete problems, problems that are in NP but NP hard, we joke sometimes about the class of AI complete problems. That is problems for which, you know, that are clearly, you know, doable with general intelligence, but for which a good solution will require general intelligence, right? And depending on how you frame the problem, some very simple looking things uh, can require general intelligence. Somebody was pointing out to me Steve Wozniak's coffee idea. If you really build a robot that uh, can sort of solve all the problems of making a cup of coffee for you in most real world situations, even though that's a really simple task on the face of it, you prob it's probably an AI complete problem. You probably need a general intelligence to be able to deal with all the things that can happen, all the variables, all the planning, all the how do I acquire resources, it can become a really open-ended problem and really require general intelligence. And of course, you know, these problems are in 
AI, if you know, if you have a general intelligence, you know, you expect it to be able to sort numbers. Like us, it may not sort them as quickly as a specialized program would or as correctly, but we expect it to, in general, be able to, if you gave it a long list of numbers, it would eventually get them in order for you. So let's look at an example of the kind of problem that I've studied quite a bit in AI, which is the pathfinding problem. The pathfinding problem is kind of interesting. You've got a map and you want to find a good route through that map from some initial place typically to some goal or set of goal places typically. Now, notice that we already have the fuzzy aspect of this, right? A map is a really vague description. A map of what kind, right? Is it a 2D map, a 3D map? Is it, you know, digitized like a Google map? Is it literally just a graph in the algorithmic sense, in the data structure sense? Is it a treasure map? Does it, you know, is it a photograph of some countryside that I have to find the roads and figure out where they go? So, you know, map could mean a lot of things. And what is a good route mean through a map? Um, you know, what, is it a short route? Is it one that, you know, is minimum distance, minimum effort, right? Even for something as simple as, you know, the problem of finding an automobile route from where you are to someplace else, right? There's several measures of good you might want. You might want shortest time, you might want least fuel, you might want safest, right? In some situations, depending on where you're going, you might want slowest, right? And so, you know, there's a lot of different things that can be tied up in that. And, you know, if you have the simplest case, if you have a street map of a neighborhood with, you know, a few dozen intersections in it, and you want to find the shortest route to somebody's house, well, then you typically use Dijkstra's algorithm or a search technique we'll study later in this course called ASTAR, which you may have studied in your algorithms class or may not. And that's fine. It goes insanely quickly and gives you guaranteed shortest paths if you implement it right. And that's fantastic. But it can be more complicated than that. Um, you know, in even in Google Maps, there's some pretty fancy AI techniques that go into quickly finding a good route when there's several tens of millions or hundreds of millions of intersections, right? All the roads in the world. And there's a whole bunch of stuff you want to take into account, right? What is the quality of the roads? Um, what is the, you know, sort of expected things that could happen along the roads? What's happening along the roads right now? And all of a sudden you start getting into the space where you maybe need something a little more than, you know, 30 lines of Dijkstra to really get a good solution. I worked on, I'll show it to you at some point, in the spaceship game EVE Online, I worked on a mapping tool whose goal was to do a thing that Google can also do for you, which is to sort of find alternate routes. Um, if I want to, you know, if I want to have options as I travel on the map such that if something goes wrong, I can switch to a different decent route, what do those options look like? Um, and that tool was really fun to build and I used some fairly fancy search and some interesting AI ideas and never did get as far as I should have with it because it's a hard problem. It wasn't just a matter of doing Dijkstra, which I did pretty quickly, or even ASTAR, which I did pretty quickly. Um, and one of the tools we have in AI is this tool of sort of abstraction and sort of re, re uh, configuring the problem to be a simpler problem that still captures sort of the essence, captures the fundamental idea of the original problem. And you know, the first trick is to abstract, to decide what irrelevant means and then distract abstract away the irrelevant details. So I look at a problem and I say, well, you know, what is relevant on this Google map, right? And for most purposes, you know, the there's a whole bunch of information on the map which might be relevant for some kind of problem, but for finding a shortest road path, first problem I might have is I don't have a Google map. I have an image you know, and I really want to take that image to some kind of map, either by matching it against a Google map or just drawing my own map or whatever. The OpenStreetMaps project is a really interesting project because what it does is it takes people's GPS tracks. It has people's cell smartphones or whatever, follow them around and sends that, in that 
location information back to OpenStreetMaps, which then tries to infer what the roadmap looks like, what the street map looks like from where people have gone, right? It looks for places where a bunch of people have gone in straight lines. It's like, ah, it might be a road over there. That's an interesting problem in its own right. And why would I wanna do that? Well, I'd wanna do that because the problem of how do I get from here to there on a roadmap is a much, much easier problem than the problem of sort of how do I get from here to there and here's a bunch of people's GPS information. So we do this kind of condensation and rewriting and even a street map, even Google Maps is pretty fancy and I'm likely one of the first things I'm gonna do is just reduce this to a simple graph, right? An undirected graph or maybe a directed graph because one-way streets are a thing and try to plot my route on that because really the actual shape of the roads doesn't matter much, right? I mostly don't care and I care about posted speed limits and how fast I can go and I care about road quality and therefore how fast I can go, but I don't really care, you know, for shortest time or shortest distance sort of if the road has a gentle curve or takes a diagonal. So, you know, we're always throwing away, but it's a trick. It's always hard to tell what's irrelevant and so abstraction becomes hard. Um, and that's a start of thinking about heuristics. It gives you a starting place that you can think about in terms of what matters and what doesn't. And like I say, over the course of this week and the next few weeks, we'll be concentrating really hard on this idea of heuristic AI, of the idea that Rather than try to do something super fancy and principled, maybe I just use some rules of thumb with simple data to try to uh, drill down on some good enough solution. Uh, and so that's what we're setting you up for. Anyway, thanks much for listening. I hope this was helpful, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Stay safe and well out there.